set. I'm Sam Hopgood. I'm the owner of the um, historic Big Ed City Market Restaurant. My name is John DeBalas. I grew up here. My great grandfather started the back in 1930. Welcome to the Roast Grill. I'm what we call Hot Dog George. I'm George Panaris. Um, my name is Anna Wheeler. I am a Raleigh native and I'm a manager here at Jewel Coffee and Table. I'm Andrea Weigel. I'm the food writer at the News and Observer. When I came um, to Raleigh in 2000, um, there were those stalwarts, the, the old timey restaurants that had been here forever, like the Roast Grill and the Mecca, and um, Big Ed's, of course, and Clyde Cooper's Barbecue, and 42nd Street Oyster Bar. They were like kind of the stalwarts of the Raleigh dining scene. The food scene here in downtown Raleigh is very vibrant. Um, you have some excellent independent chefs that have opened their own restaurants. We have some independent owners that have done different themes of restaurants in downtown Raleigh. And it's just been real exciting to see all that come in place. And I've been so excited to be a part of the downtown community since I moved back to Raleigh about five years ago. It's um, been amazing to me how the scene has changed. I really thought when I moved back here that I would stay for about six months and move to a bigger city. And I was so excited about what was happening in downtown Raleigh that I decided to stay. Breakfast is what we're known for. And as we've grown the past year, 10 years since I've owned the operation, we've seen breakfast continue to be in a menu, a meal period that is stretched out between your traditional 7 and 10 in the mornings. Now our pancakes are the size of a hubcap. Um, we have a lot of people that come in and do a pancake challenge where we um, serve you three large pancakes. You have 45 minutes to eat it. You eat it, you get a free t-shirt from Big Ed saying, I ate the big one. That has become real popular with the young folks here in downtown. We're best known for our burgers and our fried chicken. Uh, the burger has a really unique name. It's called the Glorified Jumbo Hamburger. I have no idea how he came up with that back in the 50s. People make fun of the name, but at the same time, it makes them remember it. So they come back for it. And um, we have excellent fried chicken. And we have other things, too, that I think are a little underrated. Um, I did a blog post on our website about the Gary Dorn Burger which was named after a famous radio broadcaster that was my grandfather's best friend. That was in the late 70s. It's a bread and veal cutlet with just ketchup, a slice of onion, and some tomato. It's pretty plain, but I think it's delicious. It doesn't sound good on the burger, but it's pretty good. <laughs> We're a little bit famous for not having ketchup and being proud of it. Uh, my grandmother spent so much time building her delicious chili. She did not want to people to put ketchup on top because that's all you would taste, she said, and we cannot change that. So after she passed, customers were looking at it saying, you can't change anything now, don't add ketchup here, unless it's April Fool's Day, we always post pictures with ketchup bottles across the counter. So we have a little bit of everything here where we have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then we also have this amazing badass coffee bar that I think has the best coffee in Raleigh. I'm a little biased. Our facility is really old. I think it was built in 1910 according to the tax website. So we have a really small kitchen and when you look at both floors of the Mecca you have to be able to feed a lot of people. Um, but we're able to do it and I think that we have a very loyal customer base. We're blessed to have them all. And there are challenges that come along with being what we are but there are also really great benefits and we're well known to a lot of people who are old Raleigh who have been here a long time. Um, I think it's kind of a triangle. The triangle has kind of been a darling of the of the New York Times and the national food media for a while. Um, bon Appetit declared all, Durham and Chapel Hill the foodiest small town um, in the country probably four or five years ago. And the, that 36 hours um, feature has come to the triangle I think four times. As far as us being part of the Raleigh culture, I think we are traditional Raleigh. You know, this North Carolina is an agricultural state and will continue to be an agricultural state.
state. Our, rep our restaurant represents the good goodness of that, um, the goodness grows program from the Department of Agriculture we participate in. Um, we try to use as many North Carolina based products that are raised and grown here in North Carolina. We see Raleigh um, of course is becoming more tech orientated and more um, business orientated, upstart businesses I should say, I guess would be the right term, term there. But we see us fitting in that fabric as far as the historical segment of folks that are visiting Raleigh or moving into Raleigh can come here and see where Raleigh's been and where, where it is now and we give them a taste of history. Um, when you come into our restaurant you'll see a, a basically a museum of historical items that are mostly came from here in Wake County. legacy restaurants, if they don't own their building, um, if they don't own the space that they're in, staying put is going to be difficult. That's why Clyde Cooper's lost their location, because they raised that block to build an apartment complex. And so that's why Clyde Cooper's had to move around the corner. Um, the real estate, I mean, in, in like the next three years, we're going to double the amount of apartment units in downtown Raleigh. I mean, that's in, incredibly going to change the landscape here. Um, and it's gonna, it can be tough on those old institutions. There's folks that have come in and said they remember coming here there when they were a child with their mom and dad and shopping here in the city market. And this is folks that you know were born in the twenties and thirties, and you know they shopped down here during that period. We've not changed much. We still cook our college range the same way we did 26 years ago. We still make our biscuits the same way we did 26 years ago. We still make our gravies the same way. Um, the only thing that we've done since then is try to enhance the menu, bring some new items on, make sure that we're meeting dietary needs as we can to those individuals that need dietary needs met. But we stick to our traditional Carolina style of cooking because we want people to split, be able to experience that and enjoy that from a cultural standpoint. Well, if you want to look at the timeline of who's old back and when, um, my great grandfather started it, and around 1952, he sort of turned it over to his son, John DeVos, who's my grandfather. And he was here from 1952 until his death in 2002. If you look at our original menu, you really see a bunch of items that aren't there anymore. I think he had a lot to do with making it something that was more appealing to people in the 20th century. And most of us endured until today. As a matter of fact, I don't know if it's been touched besides the Gary Moore burger since the 50s or 60s. And he's the one to put the burger on the menu. His father did not want to do it. You look at it now, that'd have been a really bad business decision to not put a hamburger on your menu. It's been such a popular item over the years. Um, my father started working here. I think about a year before I was born, so that'd be in 1978. He really started running a day-to-day -day operation in 1991. Um, my grandmother's also been here since 1962, I believe, so the JFK administration. Uh, her and dad have basically been a team ever since my granddad passed. Um, it had to have been a strange dynamic because even though my dad sort of prayed the day of the operation since 1991, his father, who's been here since 1952 himself, was up here every day, and there had, you know, they had to walk a fine line. I'm sure, I don't know, but uh, I just couldn't imagine working with your dad every single day. back in 1940. We are currently the second oldest existing restaurant uh, in the same family name. The oldest is the Mecca. I think everybody knows about the Mecca that lives around these parts. I make hot dogs. I was going to be an architect. I was a baker and a chef. 
Uh, then Grandma called me after my grandfather died young. She kept me going until she was 88. And she called me to come in and take over and continue what she was doing with no changes whatsoever except for the prices, of course. Uh, Man vs. Food was here six years ago, and they rerun our episode nightly. Six years now, so we're still getting in brand new customers day after day after day after day. Uh, the day Snoopy's hot dogs opened, my grandmother was really scared to death that they would take half, two thirds of her business, but we already had our clients, and this hot dog is definitely totally different from every other hot dog in Raleigh. There are days you can walk in and find five, six auto mechanics sitting here. Another day you can walk in and the governor's sitting here with three or four passive reps and senators. You never know who you're going to be having lunch with at the Rose Grill. A good goal for us would try to be the most noted historical restaurant in North Carolina. We're not there yet. We may never get there, but if you set the goal, it'll give you the right priorities and I think you'll do the right thing. and she's built upon that with um, first Beasley's and Chuck's and then Fox Liquor Bar. And then we are the most recent place to open and she also has two new places in the work, um, works Death and Taxes and Bridge Club. So it's a really exciting company to be a part of and it's been a really big part of the downtown Raleigh restaurant growth where I remember growing up here when I was in high school um, I volunteered at the Science Museum here downtown and you would get done at 5 o'clock and there would be nothing. Like people just cleared out. It's really in the last five years with Empire Eats, with um, Raleigh Times and City and Gravy and then Ashley as well with Pools and her restaurants that it's really livened up the downtown scene. It's also a huge honor that she won the James Beard Award last May. Um, she's the first chef in Raleigh to do so and to bring a national honor like that to our city is a huge boon. It really just is something like I think everyone here can be so proud of that we're a city where our restaurants get recognized like that. I don't know that Raleigh's food scene was seen from the outside as having grown up until Ashley kind of claimed the city and started adding restaurants. Um, and she went about it in a very kind of big name chef way with lots of expansion I would say almost very quickly. Pools is a take on a southern diner, but with really high quality local ingredients and really refined preparations. Chuck's is burgers. Um, it's 100% ground chuck. The burgers are everything from your basic cheeseburger to one with um, truffled kale and nuts on it. And it's just a really fantastic, like high quality burger place with hot dogs and milkshakes too. And then Beasley's is a take on southern cuisine, but very simple with a focus on chicken and honey. So it's fried chicken with honey drizzled on it as their signature dish. But they have fantastic sides. They branched out a little bit where they do fish fried Fridays and they have really awesome um, chicken pot pie and their brunch is fantastic. So we're seeing stuff that's been successful in other markets. So um, Bittersweet, which is a, a dessert bar Okay. They, they serve coffee in the morning, but they also, their primary thing they serve at night is dessert and cocktails. Um, I would, yeah, if you had asked me five years ago if that would work in downtown Raleigh, I'd be like, no way. You know what I mean? Or the meatball shop, a place that specializes in meatballs. <laughs> I mean, you know, you're like, what? And they certainly work in like New York and Chicago and LA. And that, you know, it's a sign of the times that it, it works here. You know, that there's enough people interested in, um, you know, whether it's a single thing executed really well, like meatballs or fried chicken or burgers at the Chuck's um, or, you know, or dessert. Okay. Um, and so, uh, you know, or I, I think about the Stanberry, the very modern restaurant. Uh, what I really like about the Stanberry, and it's tucked away, you have to go find it up by Peace College. Mm -hmm is that it has a very modern menu. It, um, and they have not pulled back from that at all. Usually when restaurants open, they'll have a very assertive, aggressive, kind of out there menu with like pig cheeks and sweet breads. And they'll, you know, they'll put cuts of meat on there that you wouldn't necessarily see. And um, 
and they'll pull back from that because it doesn't sell. But the Stanberry hasn't had to do that. And I think that's a sign of the Raleigh's evolving dining scene and our evolving palette.